Hello everybody, Dr. Rick here, dropping in on you. Hope that um, everything is going well with you guys. Uh, it's been a very busy uh, couple of weeks for me. Um, the summer is going to be hectic. I'm pushing a lot of things in a lot of different areas. And I wanna stop by and talk with you briefly about one area that's immensely important to me. It's nothing new, but it's definitely something that has to be consistently put in front of the public because I don't think that we get, get an idea of the gravity of what's going on right now. So <clears throat> first and foremost, uh, you guys know I told you, uh, I want you to know that we're still in the middle of a fundraiser for Black Men Lead. Uh, you can look in the description box and see how you can support the work we do. Those of you who know me, this isn't nothing new. You know what we do. Uh, you've been knowing how long we do it. For those of you who are new, uh, maybe the first time, a couple of times you've seen us, you don't know what we do. There's a link to the uh, organization's official web page that you can see the work we've done. Uh, over the decades. This is nothing new for us. We've been doing it. We will continue to do it as long as I have breath in my body. Uh, with that being said, let's move forward. First things first, uh, I had talked to you about little Melania Green. I'm still trying to confirm some things. There have been some reports that she has been found safe. I don't know how true that is because I can't get it from a reputable source. It's all um, third, fourth party hearsay i need to confirm it but i would love for that to be true uh something that i talked about in a previous video the importance of protecting our young girls and our women uh we have over seventy thousand black females missing in this country alone and that's absolutely unacceptable and we have to do a better job of covering our women uh and our young babies and on that note i'm going to move into what i want to talk about I have been on a tear probably for the last three or four years um, concerning the importance of the family, the black family, the attack on black love, uh, the importance of both uh, male and female uh, in the family, in the home, and so many other things, wrote uh, books on it, wrote uh, position papers on it, did lectures on it. Uh, I don't know how many videos, well over 100, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure I, of the 1,600 videos I've done, just on this channel alone, well over 100 have been on uh, the importance of restoring the black family. A big uh, influence and important factor in restoring the black family is going to be the black male. Uh, the black male who we eventually hope to move into black manhood. And I want to make the distinction because being a male at any age doesn't automatically qualify you to function in the role of a man as we must define it for our people. Uh, I've been really big on defining manhood because I think we need a universal understanding of what manhood is. And I think we lack that. I think we have people defining manhood based on their strengths. I think we have women uh, with a misconcept or a misunderstanding of what manhood based on specific needs that each of them have. And so we got people just finding where they fit in and then elevating or emphasizing their strengths and saying that's what manhood is about. No, manhood is about so much more than shining in one, any one particular area. Um, and so I've defined that, but one of the things that I use to help that is I believe that we can't wait for men or males to become adults to start trying to teach the principles of manhood or enforce or demand them to execute the principles of manhood. I think that's something that comes through proper socialization, which is one of the reasons I created uh, Black Men Lead. Uh, the initial uh, reason I went into researching that the research that led to the development of Black Man League which is a rite of passage program designed to socialize young black males into black manhood. But it started out with dealing with violence because I needed to understand why 
that was elevated violence outside of the understanding of the influence of poverty which is one um social uh, and cultural uh influences which is another uh, what was some of the other factors that we can control from our end that can reduce the violence and what we found is that there are five components to uh, violence uh, that 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 precipitates and raises the risk of a black male committing violence uh, the first is uh, witnessing violence I'm gonna give you the five the first is witnessing violence uh, creates a the desensitivity to violence and can lead to a higher risk of violence. The second is being a victim of violence. Again, desensitizes it and justifies it and sends a message that when something doesn't go your way, this is how you deal with it. Uh, that's the first. The third is urban hassle. Urban hassle are can be anything that is directly social associated with any city, inner city urban living. Uh, on, in the Midwest and the East, it's going to be L trains running all times of the day and night while kids are trying to focus and study. Uh, it's going to be the navigation through gang violence and drug usage just to get to school and get home from school. It's going to be the consistent sirens and gunfire in the middle of the night. All of these things are urban hassle and so much more. That puts a kid's psyche on edge that puts them in an emotional instability that again increases the risk of them becoming more violent the top two were interesting the number two was the lack of proper socialization and i'm like okay so we haven't properly socialized young black males and so the lack of socialization hasn't given them identity they lack identity, they lack purpose, they lack understanding how they fit, they don't know their roles, and so they search for themselves for a place in this world, an identity in this world. And the number one cause is the feeling of being disrespected. Number one cause for violence, you go to the penitentiary, it's, people full, it's uh, full of uh, black males who said, he disrespected me, he dissed me, and he came at me wrong and all these other things that line up under the, the, the category of that, uh, of feeling disrespected. And so I went in and, and, and so what I said is, it's hard to control how a kid feels about being disrespected because they're defining it in their own way. But the one thing you can do is you can socialize them. When you socialize them, you can also define respect. You can define it in a way that gives it the necessary nuances that they don't feel necessary to try to take it because it's not something you can take. And if you define it as something you can't take, then the need to try to in enforce it is gone. But you also, you, you socialize them into an understanding of why they're here, what their purpose is, and so much more. And it is absolutely powerful of a tool. Kids who are properly socialized less likely to commit violence, less likely to go to prison, less likely to drop out of school, more likely to own a business, more likely to become financially successful. And that's just some of them. And so we decided that we were going to use it for that, but we found out it also prepares them for marriage. They're less likely to be uh, domestic, uh, perpetrators of domestic violence and uh, intimate partner violence. They are more likely to be supporters of their families and their children. They're more likely to stay married and so many other things that align uh, with being a strong knit good community as far as family is concerned we have got to get a universal rite of passage on deck when I say universal what I mean is it's great the work that we're doing with boys on the level that we can work with them we need it done on a universal level at least in this country to start with what does that mean that every young black boy no matter what city he stays in no matter what what county he lives in is going to have a general understanding of what the entire black collective is going to expect from them because manhood is going to be defined on a universal level everybody's going to understand uh that 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 a good man is not just a, a provider he's got to be a provider but he's also got to be a protector he's got to be a protector at a higher level to me than he has to be a provider he has to defend he has to create a space that is safe and secure for his wife and for his children it is absolutely imperative he also must be one that can elevate and empower his family through his words 
and that means that he's got to be able to promote them and lift them up and put them in a position to be successful. He's got to be a priest, meaning that he is the divine connection between the Most High and his family. Doesn't mean that his wife doesn't pray, means that he's the divine connection, that he covers her and her prayers. And then finally, he's got to be a prophet. I don't mean in the sense of clairvoyance of predict predicting the future. I mean in the sense of speaking power in and through the lives of the people in his family. And those are the basic and bare minimums of manhood. And we've got to get that out there. We've got to teach it. And, you know, and there are going to be people chiming in. Well, what about the women? There are a lot of things that our women have to learn. There's a lot of things that our women need. Our women need healing just like our men. Our women need to grow just like our men. Our women need to improve. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to be a leader, you start with you. If you want to want to beat on your chest and call yourself a king, you start with you. You want to beat on yourself and call yourself the head, you start with you. You you, you, don't, you don't pass the buck. You don't say what about them. That's kitty stuff. That's immature. When I want something done in my company, I don't walk in and say, well, what's wrong with y'all? I sit down and I figure out what didn't I do to get them to do what it is they need to do. When it's sitting down, and it's the same thing across the board, that if you want high performance, it starts with you. And so I am challenging everybody that is talking about black empowerment to get from get beyond the talk get beyond social media banter and debate and get behind a program that has already proven to be effective i'm telling you what the research said less likely to drop out of school less likely to become criminal minded less likely to become incarcerated more likely to stay married more likely to take care of their family more likely to own a business we've got to have that on a universal level so I'm asking you again to show your love, show your support. Uh, I'm about to get out of here. I'm on my way to the gym, but I had to drop in and drop that on you. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable.